Hello and welcome back to another video on the Cardinal Conkey YouTube channel. Today I will be looking at the House of Kneda and uh, also the House of uh, uh, Manor, well, the first member of the House of uh, Manor. Uh, now, they were the kings of Gwened, or Gwenes, should I say. Uh, the double D is a sort of a TH in the, uh, in the word like they. Uh, kind of sound. Um, now the first member of this house uh, was the house's namesake, a man called Kineda or Kineda, although in Welsh it should be uh, Kunitha. Um, now he was um, a Rotodini um, man, that was a tribe, um, and he was sent up north to Hadrian's Wall to fight off Pictish incursions and then he was relocated to North Wales to defend against uh, Munster uh, or Irish uh, pirates who were raiding a lot and I mentioned this in my video about uh, Vortigern and the Kings of Powys uh, there were a lot of uh, well, uh, sorry, Irish pirates and uh, he did this in the uh, region of the Venedotti uh, and that would later become uh, the Kingdom of Gwyneth, uh, so sort of around northern Wales uh, and Anglesey. Um, now, there are two explanations for this. First, that he was ordered by the Romans, and second, that he was ordered by Vortigern, uh, who obviously is here and was the King of Powys at the time. Uh, now, Cunida uh, also married the daughter uh, of Cole Hen, also known as Old King Cole, who was the Romano uh, Breton uh, ruler of Eboracum, which is modern day York. Okay, uh, now most likely Cunida established himself as a local ruler in the region that became known as Gwyneth uh, and probably had little opposition. Uh, now the archaeological record. Um, shows that Irish um, pirates were on the uh, Clean uh, Peninsula around this time, which is sort of the peninsula south of uh, Anglesey. Uh, however, possible raids as far west as Roxeter by the late 4th century um, might have also been uh, by the, um, the Irish. So, you know, uh, it makes sense that Canida was sent down there uh, to repel the Irish. Um, Vortigern, who was um, very much a successor to Rome, he implemented many of the Roman uh, methods of governance, which I touched on in my video of uh, him and his successors, uh, might have uh, sent Cunida down. I personally prefer this um, theory as, in all likelihood, um, the times don't really match up because... Um, Basically, the general who supposedly uh, sent Canida down, called Maximus, uh, died um, in 388, which was a very long time before Canida's rise uh, to prominence. Also, sorry if I have a bit of a hoarse voice, my throat's going a little bit. Um, now, Vortig uh, sorry, Canida um, had uh, two, well, he had nine sons, actually, but two of which were important. Uh, this guy was made uh, as a, a king in sort of southwestern Wales, uh, and his other son, Enion, or Eninion, sorry, uh, was the next king of Gwynedd. Now he uh, travelled with his father to North Wales to expel the Irish, um, and he inherited the kingdom of Gwynedd after his father's death. Like I said, um, now. Uh, eventually he died obviously and his kingdom was split in two the senior um, male got uh, Gwyneth his name was Cadwallon uh, and uh, or Cadwallon and his other brother uh, Owain was made king of Ross uh, and again sorry um, I apologize if my pronunciations are a bit off I'm not Welsh as I mentioned in my um, Vortigern video but this is kind of just, um, you know, I, I quite like the history, but uh, please excuse me if uh, I get something wrong, which I inevitably will. Uh, anyway, so Cadwallon uh, was created 
uh, sorry, was credited uh, with having driven off the last Irish settlers from Anglesey, which he made his capital. Uh, now, when this video goes live, I will be in Anglesey um, on, uh, well, about pretty near to where uh, their capital was, uh, Aberfraw. Um, and I might even make a video, like a short, um, of, you know, some places there. Um, but he um, expelled the Irish from uh, Anglesey. And uh, his epithet, uh, Lauhir, uh, possibly is a metaphor that refers to the extent of his authority. It means long arms, basically. Um, anyway, he, there's a, a legend that after defeating, or well, sorry, while defeating the Irish, he actually padlocked the feet of his um, men so they wouldn't run away from the enemy. And it must have worked uh, because they won and repelled the Irish. Although I can't imagine fighting with padlocks around my feet. And now his son was Mylgwyn. Uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, and he was, um, according to Gildas, a guy who actually murdered his uncle uh, Owain uh, in order to um, seize the throne of Gwyneth uh, from Owain who tried to claim it. Uh, now, Mylgwyn was himself a generous supporter of Christianity, probably one of the first Christian uh, members of his house, and uh, he funded many churches. Uh, however, even the Christian Gildas, who was an Anglo-Saxon, uh, was very uh, cruel um, to uh, Mylgwyn's reputation and legacy, and uh, basically had a scathing account of, of uh, his rule. Um, now, Mylgwyn died of the Yellow Plague, and I touched on this in my uh, Powys video. That was uh, the Justinian Plague, which ravaged through Wales. It was very devastating, particularly in Powys and Gwynedd, uh, because they were more built up. Okay, then we get Hrun, uh, who uh, came to the the throne after the death of his father, obviously, and he waged war against uh, Altkut or Altklut, Altklut, sorry, uh, which was Strathclyde, uh, kind of in the north, which was a Britonic kingdom, and uh, Godothin, which was also in the north, sort of near the Firth of Forth. Uh, now, nothing is known of his son Belly, and then his son uh, Iago. Uh, there's not, not much known about him, uh, but there is a little bit. Um, so, basically, um, the only record uh, of him is his death, which occurred at the Battle of Chester. Or sorry, the same year as the Battle of Chester. Um, now, there seems to be no link between the two events. It's more of a coincidence, uh, because there's no evidence that Gwyneth took any part in the battle. Uh, now, he was succeeded by his son at Cadfan, um, and uh, in the medieval Welsh triads, the death of King Iago is described as the result of a, an axe blow uh, by one of his own men, a certain Cadafael, uh, the wild. Um, and furthermore, a certain word used in the chronicles called uh, Dormitato uh, often is used to refer to clerics. So, there are a few ways, a few theories in which he died. Maybe it was by the axe, maybe he was a, a priest and kind of retired in later life. Uh, who knows? Anyway, uh, Cadfan uh, was his son, and uh, he made a grant to St. Bueno, uh, and St. Bueno's is the current church in uh, Aberfraw. Um, now, he made a grant of a monastery to him. Uh, now, Cadfan came to the throne... Um, near the time of the Battle of Chester, like I said, in uh, 616, uh, in which the Northumbrians under Aelthrith, or uh, Althrith, uh, decisively defeated the neighbouring Welsh kingdom of Powys and uh, massacred a bunch of monks at Bangor is uh, However, uh, there is no evidence that Gwyneth uh, had any part in the battle, uh, so Cadfan's accession at the time uh, it's a coincidence, like I said. And that's uh, the Battle of Chester for you. Quite an important battle, uh, as it's mentioned with these two monarchs. Then we have uh, Cadwallon. Uh, now, little is known of his early reign, 
Uh, now Bede, again, Saxon, and obviously the Saxons and Welsh were quite hostile. Uh, so, you know, don't expect these reports from um, Saxon priests or, uh, you know, Anglo-Saxon priests to be uh, particularly accurate. They were very biased. So just take everything with a pinch of salt. Anyway, Bede says um, that he, he was basically very critical. And um, he says that uh, Cap Wallen was basically a big tyrant, a big uh, murderer. Now, to the Welsh, he is revered as a hero. I'll tell you a bit more about that now. Uh, now, Cadwallon was certainly affected by the ambitions of King uh, Edwin of Northumbria. Uh, now, Edwin, at the time, had been expanding greatly uh, his kingdom. He had conquered Elmet, uh, which was kind of in Yorkshire, and uh, he'd also uh, taken over, basically, uh, all of his neighbouring uh, lands. So, yeah, he was very expansionist and obviously that threatened Cadwallon's reign uh, as King of Gwynedd. So, um, he basically uh, decided that he wanted to rebel and he uh, spoke to the king, or sorry, uh, I say king, uh, a man from Mercia who became the king uh, called Penda. He was a, a pagan, a staunch pagan, the last pagan king, in fact. Um, and they decided to form an alliance. However, Cadwallon was besieged on Puffin Island, um, which was a little island off Anglesey. And that uh, dates to the year 629. Uh, now, the Welsh triads, which is basically a chronicle, uh, portray Cadwallon... Um, as a uh, you know a heroic um, leader against Edwin in this battle, um, and this may refer to um, the Battle of Diggle as well, where Cadwallon uh, spent some time in Ireland uh, after uh, sorry before uh, coming back and defeating Edwin. Uh, now, basically, uh, Cadwallon um, in the real history probably didn't do that, and he probably stayed uh, on the. Uh, I say the continent, on the island of um, Great Britain. Um, sorry, not Great Britain. You know what I mean. On um, on that side of the Irish Sea. Let's uh, let's say that. Um, now, Geoffrey of Monmouth has another tale. He says that uh, Cadwallon um, survived after the Battle of Winfide in uh, six, um, sorry, 654, uh, which was years after he uh, allegedly died. Uh, so I think we can really just uh, discount that. Now, anyway, let's get back to Penda. Um, Penda and Cadwallon uh, made a strange alliance because, of course, Mercia and uh, the Welsh were famously hostile. In particular, uh, the Mercians were very hostile with King Offa. However, they probably saw a mutual benefit in defeating uh, the Northumbrians. And they did this at the Battle of Hatfield Chase, uh, in 633, uh, which ended in the death of Edwin and his son Ostrith, uh, Osfrith, sorry, I excuse, sorry, excuse my pronunciation. Uh, now, after this, he basically became uh, the de facto ruler of Northumbria, uh, and it was divided in between, uh, sorry, it was divided into the two kingdoms of Deira and Bernicia, uh, and the war actually continued on. And now Cadwallon and Penda, like I say, became the de facto rulers of uh, Northumbria. And Bede says that they were tyrants who uh, didn't differentiate between uh, men and uh, women and children in their bloodthirsty uh, vengeance. Uh, now Cadwallon was actually besieged by the king of Deira, who was trying to rebel. Uh, his name was Ostric. Uh, but Cadwallon sallied out and uh, def defeated uh, Osric um, immensely and uh, crushed him. Uh, now, Bede um, rambles a lot about um, Cadwallon's tyranny against the uh, good people of um, Northumbria and, again, you know, how much of a tyrant he was is up for debate. I can imagine he was probably quite firm to his uh, enemies' subjects, but, you know, was he as bad as Bede makes him out to be? We'll never know. Uh, now, the uh, 
new king of Bernicia, Ian Frith, uh, killed Cadwallon um, at the Battle of uh, Heaven or Heaven uh, Field. Um, oh, sorry, uh, that wasn't Ian Frith. Um, that was Oswald. Um, I beg my sorry, beg my pardon. Um, in fact, um, Cadwallon had killed Ian Frith um, a bit before that. Now, Cadwallon only ruled over uh, Northumbria for about a year, but his legacy was immense, and he is regarded, like I say, as a, a huge hero uh, for Wales in general, and, uh, you know, Gwyneth in particular. Uh, so he is sort of the first great ruler. Uh, you know, Canida and Vortigern, while they were hugely important, you know, their existence is uh, up for debate whereas Cadwallon certainly existed and uh, certainly did what he did, even if the writers who wrote about him uh, were quite harsh uh, about his memory. Uh, now, then it went to um, basically a nobody called uh, Cadafael. And uh, Cadafael um, was known as one of the uh, peasant kings, one of the three peasant kings, or a son of a stranger. Uh, for obvious reasons, he didn't have any noble lineage. Um, now, this uh, now he came to the throne. Sorry, at a time when there was uh, the alliance with Penda of Mercia, uh, and even after the death of Cadwallon, the war still raged on against Northumbria, uh, and basically the alliance enjoyed many successes until Penda was himself killed. Uh, and this basically destroyed the alliance. And uh, after that, uh, Northumbria would gain its revenge. It would uh, basically permanently um, defeat the Britonic kingdoms of northern England, um, such as... Um, I forgot its name. Uh, whew, what was it called? Uh, the uh, Godolphin. Um, not Godolphin. Uh, uh, Godolphin, uh, Godolphin? I, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, but the, the kingdom uh, near the Firth of Forth and Altkut, so they um, basically continued their expansion. Uh, I apologise for um, the scattiness of my notes. However, Gwyneth uh, and Powys were able, uh, oh, sorry, Powys were, were uh, able to escape this, even though they were diminished in their uh, sort of power and strength. Uh, but, you know, they lived to fight another day. Now, Cadafael uh, died, obviously, and his um, title went back to Cadwallon's son, uh, Cadwallader? Cadwallader? I don't know. Uh, now, he is known as kind of a, a redeeming figure in um, Welsh history. He is the last person that Geoffrey of Monmouth gives the title King of Britain to. Uh, and that title went back to Brutus of Britain. Uh, he was a descendant of Aeneas uh, of, Tr uh, of Troy. And uh, yeah. Now, um, allegedly in uh, Cadwallader's reign, um, there were two plagues, and he, um, you know, died of the second one. Uh, but he was also uh, a pilgrim, and um, you know sacrificed a lot of his power for uh, holy deeds and then it went to uh, Rodri and uh, uh, sorry Idwal and then Rodri uh, both of whom I couldn't find much uh, information on because that period uh, of, uh, of Gwyneth's history was not particularly noteworthy then it went to a very distant cousin he was technically related through uh, the kings of Ross um, but it went to this guy who was more or less a stranger called Caradog, and Caradog um, was the guy who basically united um, the Celtic church with the Catholic church. Obviously, the two churches had differentiated uh, after the fall of Rome because there was less of a centralised uh, means of communication. Um, uh, and the main dispute was about the uh, date of Easter, uh, but Caradog basically solved that. He reconciled with Rome. And, uh, yeah, he was known as quite a, a friendly figure to uh, the Roman church. Um, now, he was actually slain in battle um, in uh, six, sorry, 798. 
and uh, allegedly um, he was uh, his throat was slit by the Mercians. Uh, that's what it says on my notes. Uh, then it went to Sinan or, or Keenan. Sorry. Uh, now Keenan um, was actually not a resident of Aberfour, uh, which uh, is that place that I will make a short on. Um, but rather, he was uh, a resident of Clenface, which was his court, um, still on Anglesey, but, you know, on the southeastern coast. Um, so he sort of moved away from the capital city. Well, the capital town, uh, Aberfour is quite small today. It might have been bigger back in the day, I don't know. Uh, now, Keenan's reign was marked um, with basically a huge power vacuum between himself and his alleged brother, uh, Howell, although people say that Howell was his distant cousin. Uh, so, you know, accounts do vary, just be aware of that. Uh, now, there is no uh, real record of his early years, this is Keenan, um, but um, like I say, there were several disasters some of which were natural disasters, but most of which were related to the Civil War. Uh, in 810, there was a bovine plague uh, that, you know, killed the cattle and uh, resulted in a famine. The next year, um, his uh, ancient court of Maelgwyn, oh, sorry, the for, uh, court constructed by Maelgwyn, who was a uh, king way back when here, uh, also burnt down, which was seen as, you know, uh, bad luck, let's just say, and that was by a lightning bolt as well, so you can see why people were getting a little bit um, paranoid. Um, and then there was obviously the Civil War uh, that lasted from 812 until 816, and Kynan was eventually defeated and banished um, to, um, well, off the island uh, and, and out of uh, Gwyneth. Now, the King of Mercia, Conewulf, took advantage of this uh, turmoil, and in 817 he uh, occupied uh, Denbingshire, uh, sorry, uh, Welsh names are just so hard to pronounce sometimes, um, and laid waste to the mountains of Snowdonia, uh, which was obviously uh, kind of the protection of Gwyneth. And the next year there was a notable battle at Clanface, which was Kynan's court, or Keenan's court, um, now, Keenan actually died uh, within a year of his exile, uh, according to the Irish and Welsh annals. Howell may have been uh, his brother or cousin, like I say. The connection is unclear. However, uh, in his reign, uh, obviously, there was that uh, conflict with the Mercians, uh, and the Mercians actually continued to um, occupy the D estuary until um, 821, when Conewulf died. Uh, now, two years later, Mercia laid waste to Powys and Gwyneth again, uh, and Howell was the last king of uh, the House of Cunida. Uh, so he had quite an unfortunate reign, and, uh, you know, a bad way to end it. Now, that's not to say that the next house wasn't related to them. Uh, Keenan's daughter uh, actually married this man here, uh, and... This is where we get the House of Manor. Uh, now, Guirad, I'm going to call him Guirad, uh, I don't think that's how it's pronounced, but he was allegedly a descendant of uh, the King of Hregid. Now, Hregid was uh, a kingdom up in the north. Uh, it was one of the kingdoms that was destroyed by the Northumbrians. If you remember when I was stumbling with those um, place names a while, um, sorry, a bit earlier in the video. Uh, now, that is really up for debate. Um, we don't really know much about that, um, but it makes sense that um, Guirad's um, ancestry came um, uh, from that region as the king was known uh, by the last name of Manor. Uh, so it's, it's assumed that uh, that's where it comes from. Okay, um, now... Basically, um, Merfwin's uh, father probably um, escaped from the Civil War by uh, going to the Isle of Man. Um, and he uh, married, like I say, the daughter of Keenan. So his um, son, uh, Merfin, uh, basically became the king 
uh, after uh, Howell. And uh, he was probably defeated by Ecbert, the King of Wessex, in uh, 830, although people don't really know how this affected his rule. Indeed, very little of his rule is known. That's why my notes have been quite scarce. Um, now, the reason why Murfin's reign was quite uneventful was because the, the um, Mercians had basically, uh, they had other, uh, bigger fish uh, to fry, and that was in the uh, West Saxons and the East Anglians. So King Burnwolf uh, was killed, uh, like I say, by the East Anglians uh, in 826, and his uh, successor Ludeca, or Ludetra, uh, suffered uh, the same fate the next year, uh, and Mercia was eventually conquered by Ecbert in uh, 829, so uh, that's why the Mercians kind of let the uh, Gwynethians um, go, and obviously that led to Murfin's probable defeat by Ecbert. Anyway, uh, his son was Rodri the Great. Now, I'm not covering him um, just yet. I will cover him in a soon to come out video um, in the very near future uh, but for now just be aware that Murfin was his father and he also married uh, Nest Furch Cadell who was in my other video on the uh, Kings of Powys and you can now trace Rodri the Great uh, from his uh, father's uh, line to Cunida and through his mother's line to Vortigern Hengist Horsa, Catagen, etc. Uh, so thank you for watching. I think this has been quite long. I'm sorry for my voice at the start. I think it's a bit better now. Uh, but goodbye and thanks for watching.